Right guys, well, you knew it was coming. This channel is all about small motorcycles. We're here at Midwest, we're here at Midwest Moto. I'm the Mindful Motorcyclist. And this is the Royal Enfield Gorilla 450 in yellow ribbon, which is actually my favorite paint scheme on this bike. It's one of the more expensive, I say expensive, but it's quite relative. It's 5,050 for this bike, which is absurdly cheap. Now, I've been watching the Gorilla uh, reviews come out. I saw the press reviews. I've been looking at how this bike's been received and it's all going swimmingly for Royal Enfield. Everybody's loving on the bike. It can do no wrong. It's the perfect little single cylinder street bike. And it's kind of annoyed me a little bit because it's, it's typical, and we now say typical, but it's typical Royal Enfield hype. The new bike comes out, it's the best thing since sliced bread and then you end up rushing out to buy it and then the bike then is either probably a little bit, there's probably a little bit, a few bits and bobs that need a dressing on it and I, I really want to get those things out and understood before people buy the bike. Now I love this bike, I'm kind of being drawn towards it, like I love the paint scheme, I can already see you've got the offset fuel cap, big wide bars, there's little things that are already <laughs> already grabbing me, but I just want to bring everybody down to earth and just like everybody breathe, okay, it's just a single cylinder 450 street bike that's five grand, it's not, as they quoted the old, the Himalayan 450, a once in a generation bike let's just everybody like take a breath calm down a little bit it's a new Royal Enfield let's do a proper review just be sensible about it and say what we like and what we don't like and let, I just want to bring some sort of calm to the space every new Royal Enfield re review these days is just so hyped and the whole thing just kind of like just kind of grates on me a little bit so that's what we're going to do today um, we're going to do like a full first ride of the Gorilla 450 and really say whether I would buy it obviously my bikes in the background the BSA 650 so there's some overlap between these two bikes both single cylinder um, both kind of retro looking even though this one's a sort of neo retro uh, and the other thing is as well which I want to address is is this the better bike than the Himalayan 450 obviously the frames the same the Sherpa engine is the same lots of the components dash is the same I can already see the handlebar controls are the same is this perhaps the bike that's the better buy over the Himalayan 450 if you're not, you know, going touring or around the Alps or whatever? Is this, you're using the bike day to day, perhaps this bike is the better bike. All right, let's do a walk around. Um, I just think that's a good way to start. And, and uh, this is my literally first review on it. I've sat on it just to put it up into this field from the dealership, but this is my, my first impressions of the bike. I'll take a little phone camera, blah, 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 and I'll, I'll go around the bike and tell you what I like about it. Two seconds. Let's begin. Okay, so first thing is this sort of like scrambler-esque rear end. I'm liking that. The seat looks great. And these handles, um, they've obviously designed these in mind not only for a pillion to grab onto but also you see they've obviously got an option here to attach accessories later on very clever of Royal Enfield to sort of future proof their bikes here nice little feature uh, that is so that you can pull the bike up when you put it onto its center stand down there that's the stuff of dreams a center stand as standard on a bike and then looking at this uh, purple rim tape um, Brem by Brie brakes and then you've got these cool tires Now that's quite a nice thing you see you've got a central strip in the tire there that basically means that you can run this bike on big mileages uh, while also having some knobbly and grippy bits oops my fingers in the way because this central strip if you're just doing lots of motorway miles for example you'll be able to um, not wear the tire down now wheels nice gloss black finish I think they're like eight spoke or something, bit unoffensive, kind of cool. Exhaust, same as the Himalayan 452, of course, a little bit of an upsweep. But look, it's not too much so that it gets in the way of any potential luggage. It's a real pain when they come up here and then you've got to worry about soft throw over luggage getting burnt on the exhaust. So decent. Engine appears to be a stressed member because you haven't got any down tube here, you see? Frame stops force or structural rigidity sorry is transmitted through the engine and then the frame will start again 
in there somewhere where the uh, the engine connects back to the frame. Got that rising rate rear linkage, uh, which I don't understand the physics through, but it's a, a decent thing to have. Engine looks unoffensive, a uh, little 450, 40 horsepower single. This bit's really cool. Um, you see, can see they've got really cool modern stickers and that like dotting on the tank, I just think looks wicked. Uh, let's, before we move on to the sort of headline features, I, I just saw the little release for the seat somewhere. Where is it? Under there. Let's have a look under the seat uh, and just see. Can I release this with one hand? Hold on. Okay, so there you go. That's what it looks like underneath. All neat and offensive. ABS module tucked up there, which is really clever. Well done, Royal Enfield. BSA put it underneath the bike. Um, you haven't got any storage room, so bear that in mind. Bit of a pain if you want to store something, like your lunch. No modern bikes seem to have any storage. Can I put this seat back with one hand? Oh, look at that. <laughs> I didn't think that would work, so we've done it. Let's come round. Yeah, I mean, look at that offset filler cap. How does it come up? This is all little things that you want to know. Yeah, really nice, just easy to work. Does it go back with a click or? Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Here we've got switch gear. Switch gear is Himalayan and you can tell it's the chunkier redesigned switch gear to make it a little bit more modern than the plastic switch gear on the entry level bikes like the Meteor and the Classic 350. Now the Aurora edition and the 650s, the Aurora 350 and the 650s have metal switch gear, which is a little bit better, but this is a five gram bike, so that's that's what that is basically. Grips, bar end weights, but it's all like kind of stylistically quite nice. The bars are very chunky, which sets the whole bike off. Non-adjustable brake levers. Um, don't like that, how that sort of like comes off there. What's that little wire coming off for the brake light? Don't know what that is. At the front of the bike, got these like plastic wobbly indicators, but you know, it's not too bad. It's a five grand bike at the end of the day. Got the TFT. Now the TFT is lifted off the Himalayan. It only comes as a TFT on the, the 5,050 pound versions of these bikes, the color schemes, which are ribbon yellow. And I'll, I'll list the other ones that come with this because the base model, which is 4,850, comes with the Super Meteor style instrument cluster and tripper. This has got the Android Auto thing already integrated into it, so it's a little bit different. Right, nice LED headlight, Royal Enfield there, chunky front forks with fork gaiters, and you've got a big chunky front tire. That's quite an interesting front tire, actually. Um, it's a 120, width uh, and 70 profile, 17 inch front. But it's kind of nice because it, it just sets the bike off. It looks kind of rugged. Radiator, wide, but it's sort of high up and out of the way. Doesn't look offensive. Go over to you, BSA. <laughs> and then underneath you've got a little bash guard, which is probably not worth the plastic it's made of. And then this is a nice feature. Somebody's had the forefoot to put a little extender onto the mud guard, which you could probably remove if you wanted to, but that's gonna really catch all the crap from flying up. And you can see this bike's been ridden already. Um, it's only got as high as there. Nothing has got up to the engine. So that's a real cool thing to have on this bike. I'll come around the other side. Non-adjustable, did I mention? Yeah, not on that side. Oh, we've got a little home button. Bybury brakes, which we'll test in a minute on the test ride. And then round this side, obviously it's pretty symmetrical apart from the exhaust. This grab handle is present on both sides, which is pretty cool. And then, yeah, let's come out again. Just show you the bike. And that is all she wrote. Drop my phone, never mind. At least there's no horse flies. Right, so we've had a walk around of the bike, showed you my first impressions. I want to love the bike already, but let's let's see how it rides. Just pay attention to sort of the the things like the jerkiness of the throttle, any vibrations. Everybody has said in very superlative terms how well handling the bike is. It's Royal Enfield's second bike with a 17-inch front wheel. First one was the Hunter 350. This could be potentially a bike that you upgrade from from a Hunter. I mean, it's an obvious upgrade, isn't it? Already, I do like it more than the Himalayan. 
because I like my bike small. And this bike is 184 kilos. I'll just get on it. Let's just get on this bike. So the seat height, very accessible. Uh, I, can, I can flat foot the bike. That's what my feet look like in the riding position. The tank is, is really cool, very sculptured. The, the stickers, I think, are under the lacquer, which is, is really nice to see. Yeah, it's just, it's just a lovely thing. Um, little USB there, um, five volt, two amp, USB-C. Um, did you know, by the way, that USB-C can actually transmit a lot higher voltage than USB-A? That's one of the advantages of it. It's not actually a format change. It allows uh, higher currents and higher voltages. So I didn't know that. Yeah, um, that's it really. Riding position, seat's pretty comfy. The centre stand is huge, very chunky. That's going to help if you put the bike down in soft soil like I do on this field. Right, the only thing to do now is to take it out on a ride. Well, that's cool when it starts up. Firm the starter. I've just come to the busiest road in the world, so... Right. Whoa! Now, I'll tell you the first impression is, um, it instantly feels lighter and revvier than the Himalayan 452. Uh, obviously that extra weight it sheds, I think it's got about 10%. Yeah, that's great fun. It's got a 10% um, weight advantage over the Himalayan. 184, I think the Himalayan's just under 2. So maybe 8% or something. You can feel it. Whoa, yeah. And the front brake is exceptionally sharp. All Royal Enfields are starting to get that now. When they come out, I remember the shotgun front brake was pretty potent. Yeah, drop down to second. F the throttle is quite responsive actually, I mean I can't... Oh, we're in KPH. I don't know how I'll have to try and change that, but... Yeah, the throttle's very light. Do you see when I, I came up here I started going on and off the throttle because it takes a very tiny little bit of rotation and the throttle there opens so be careful about that and I'll wait till we get past the dog in the dog at Dunley everybody knows that just tap my indicators look Cancel, 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 cancel. <laughs> I know that annoys a few people. I've got an overzealous habit of cancelling indicators when they're not on, so that happens on this channel. Chug, 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 chug. Here's the sign that says 30. We're looking for a following sign white with a black stripe down the middle which means national speed limit for those of you who are watching from in America or whatnot this means 60 miles an hour or 100 kph on my clock whoa nice revy engine when you get up to six it surges way whoa it's really fun actually <laughs> Brakes are phenomenal. Let me try the rear brake. Whoa. Okay, not as potent as the shotgun, but the front is devastating. <laughs> so you got a couple of things in play in my first initial experience. One is the throttle is incredibly light. So a tiny little bit of input and whoa, she goes forward. It's obviously set up to be yeah, I go around this bend now. <laughs> you can literally throw this little thing around the bend. <laughs> I'm in fourth now. Fifth. There's 100 kph. 
it's one of those bikes that's fun to go fast on but you're not going that fast you know like the the indian ftr that we rode that was just devastatingly fast but but too fast this you can have loads of fun and you're not breaking the speed limit you can tell it's a little bit low on torque compared to other bikes because I'm in the fifth there, coming up the hill, wide open. It's creeping up, but it's not sort of surging forward like you would with a bigger displacement engine. Cancel, 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 keep doing that. <laughs> the other thing to notice, the faster I go, the worse the wind noise is, so I'll probably stop doing that um, for you guys. Sort of racing towards the horizon. I will go around this bend a little bit faster. Though. Whoa! Whoa! The front brake is so powerful on this bike. It's only a single disc, probably 300 millimeters, but it's got so much bite. So whoever designs the brakes at Royal Enfield, they're on to they need a, they need a pay rise or something because the sh last few bikes, the shotgun was devastating, so powerful. And and it's not related to brands. Because you can have Brembo brakes or Bybree brakes, the Brembo sub-brand, and it's not it's not kind of like dependent on whether the braking system's good or not. Bybree, I think, is as good as Brembo. So 40 miles an hour is about 70, 70 kph. So as I come into this little little uh, urbanisation here, I'll downshift give you a little bit of the engine note don't pull out cancel 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 <laughs> it's a very light gearbox no one behind me so it might be time to do the little jerky on off test you know I'm doing it I'm doing it bloody hell There's nothing. Even though the throttle is very light, like the tiniest little. But you can solve that by rolling onto it yourself. Look. I mean, you'll see in the camera if there's any jerk. Yeah, this car came in, so. I think it passed that with flying colours. Now let's look for any jerkiness. It's fast. I mean, obviously things are relative. It's not a litre bike, but it's got a surprising amount of pep. Let's put it like that. Right, I did promise this wasn't going to be a gushing review, so let's try and um, be objective a little bit. This is a bit weird. Look at that. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Is that on? It's got no tactile-ness at all. Drop down through the gears. Stop here. Now, a nice low seat height. Easy to flat foot the bike. On all my reviews now, I've started to wear proper boots. And I recommend you guys do the same. Um, I'll show you. These are the Faro Robson. They're only about 80 quid, 70 quid. And um, boots go a lot more than that. Um, and what it gives me, it gives me like a sure-footedness. And I found when I switched to my Sparda Sportster, whatever they're called, those trendy high top like trainers, you could, you step on uneven ground or mud or gravel and stuff, and you could you look cool, but you could easily fall off. So I started wearing sort of like proper boots. Not only are they more protective, it means you don't have an embarrassing drop of the bike. You don't slip over, especially on bikes I'm not used to. Okay, so my original question, would you buy this bike or the Himalayan? Definitely buy this bike. And unless you want to tour on it or go long distance, this bike whoops the Himalayan for me. Lighter, more chuckable, kind of chunky. The tyres probably cope, cope with gravel, which is what most people will use the Himalayan 4524. Side stands a normal length. Didn't mention that earlier, but it is. And you've got the same engine, gearbox, TFT frame 
fuel economy, got all the goodness of the Himalayan, but in I think a better package. I mean, the problem is, is that everybody gets so hyped about these bikes and you've got to take a moment and remember that this isn't the first 40 horsepower single cylinder bike. I mean, Zontes, the GK350, that's cheap as well, four and a half grand. Um, it's got a proper TFT that you can put YouTube on and weird fancy stuff like that. You've got the Triumph Speed 400, of course, which is selling like absolute hotcakes and in a way that bike beat Royal Enfield to the punch because they sold 300 bikes a month for six months if yeah, that's Royal Enfield sales numbers and it's going to Triumph so what you've seen is Triumph stepping on Royal Enfield's toes but also Royal Enfield with the, the shotgun 650 and the premiumness of that bike stepping on Triumph's toes so those two fighters that were a different category different weight class you know, premium class, whatever you call it, and now sort of like, you know, competing. Very interesting to see. Um, and then the other bike, which is also a 40 horsepower single, is the Fantic Caballero 500. I mean, that one's priced out, really, so we can't really compare that. Um, and don't get me started on Fantic. I think they're in, in, in a world of trouble because they don't sell. They didn't, they didn't sell before, and that was prior to the Speed 400 and this little uh, Gorilla 450 uh, and they're way too expensive so um, you're really talking this bike or the Speed 400 so I have ridden the Speed 400 um, all over Portugal or well not all over Portugal but all over the Algarve I really enjoyed it I would probably lean towards this and I'm just going to own up to it I'm more of a Royal Enfield fanboy than a Triumph fanboy I have a Triumph, okay, so don't like get me wrong, I own a Triumph motorcycle, my Daytona. But as far as their modern retro range goes, I'm not really that into them. And I think the Speed 400 is great, it's just not a bike for me, I can't really put, put up a thing on it, why? Probably it's a little bit buzzy, and if you think that this bike's got 12-13% more displacement, so if you can maintain the same weight while having a little bit more displacement, a little bit more torque, um, then you're onto something. Now I don't know whether uh, this bike has a lighter flywheel or something than the Himalayan. If the pickup is, is insane. Like for 450 cc's. They've done something similar with the shotgun, you know. The shotgun was felt more faster than it sh More faster. <laughs> I'm supposed to know English. Let's just go with it. More faster. The shotgun felt round this little bend. I actually commented exactly here. This section of the road. Look at that. Whoa. A little bit of G-force. Oh. 30. Stop messing around. Got confused then. Right. <laughs> Slow down. Um, the shotgun felt fast as well. So, have they changed the flywheel on this little thing? Probably, I don't know. So we can say for a street bike, this is now a strong contender. It's insanely cheap. I love the colours of yellow ribbon. And it's very chuckable. And the suspension is nigh on perfect. It's kind of non-adjustable, but I, I'm, I'm a kind of non-adjustable suspension chap. I don't, I, I've never, I don't even understand what knob does what, to be honest. There's a little one, <laughs> a compression and rebound. There's like, just give it, let someone at the factory choose my suspension and I'll just ride it like that because <laughs> they know what they're doing more than I do. Um, so the suspension for me feels great. What you'll get with Royal Enfield as well is a whole load of dealers, a whole load of aftermarket support. Uh, you'll get good owners, clubs, groups, camaraderie. You've got the whole, whole thing really. But anyway, I was trying to make this not a review that I was sort of like gushing all over the bike. So what we're going to do, we'll drop down the gears. I'll rev the bike out in the gears. See if there's any vibes. Nope. It's really weird because on the Himalayan 452, I had, I had a proper vibration spot in third. But here, none. Obviously I've got the sort of like standard vibration for, from the seat because it's single cylinder, a little bit in the pegs. Mirrors don't blur until about 8,000. 
So they do blur eventually, but you've got to be, oh, see the throttle almost caught, got me then. Very light throttle. <laughs> but that's weird, because there's a difference between this bike and the Himalayan. Himalayan was very, um, not very, but it had a buzz. At three, in third gear, at like five and a half, there was a definite buzz. Slow down. No. I really uh, get so excited with this bike. I need to sort of like keep checking that kilometers. It's confusing me. So let's do riding position because really the town's a good place for me to talk because you haven't got much wind noise. Riding position is is typical Rod Enfield. It's sort of all the comfortable, very accessible, almost like universal fit. You know when you buy like clothes, you know when you're getting old and you buy clothes that are universal fit, um, just because you don't want the hassle of trying on different sizes. This is a bit like that. It'll fit anyone. I would say the exception is probably somebody who's very tall, like two-wheeled Willy. Plug for two-wheeled Willy, go and watch his channel. Love the guy, super nice guy. Um, he's a Royal Enfield fan as well. Uh, he's currently running a Kawasaki Z900 RS. Um, but he is a Royal Enfield fan, so if you like this uh, video, go and, go and support Two Wheeled Willy. But he's six foot five, so he's not going to fit on this little bike. Much as he might love the bike, he won't fit on it. I think if you, I mean, we're just monologuing here, we're just going for it. There's no, like, there's no structure to this review or whatnot. I think if you like the shotgun, you'll love this. Because it's that, like, urban, cool Royal Enfield, you know? I, I shouldn't even be riding it in the countryside, it's not really a countryside bimbler it's like a it's like an urban center of london kind of trendy go to a little microbrewery bike it's, it's that kind of thing it's not a country pub bike so if mr darcy and the old man <laughs> take this to a country pub i'll be like no guys it's not a country pub bike tell you what it's so fun just to blast out on it <laughs> um Handlebars, nice and wide, not that much of a reach. The bike is quite kind of compact, I would say. Whereas I think Triumph of the Speed 400 and definitely the Scrambler 400, they made it like a proper bike. You know, they, they made it feel like a big sized bike. But this is, is like 10% shrunk compared to that, I would say. Which I think is great because I prefer small lightweight bikes. Um, this is really the kind of riding I'd love to do, you know. This is. This is the sort of stuff of dreams for me, is riding a, a, a peppy, lightweight bike. Now it's not as lightweight as it could be, um, and Royal Enfield, as Nick J will remind us, never makes a lightweight bike. It's just not in their design ethos to make a bike that's, that wins on lightweight. They always are really, to be honest, a little bit heavy. Um, but that's not really a, a, a factor when you buy a Royal Enfield. The, the Hunter was 18 180, 181 kilos. This is 184, but obviously the Hunter had 20 horsepower. This has got 40. So what's three horsepower? What's three kilos when you got double the horsepower? I get over the acceleration of this bike. Tree fiddle with a dash of it. So I got like a home button there. That's hazards mode. Let's press mode. Oh. Mode change tonight, retry in net ignition cycle. So you obviously can't change the riding mode to turn the bike off and on again. Um, I guess it's got sport and economy, kind of pointless on a bike of this power output. I love throwing this bike around the bends. Tires have got loads of grip. I think we're over complaining about Seat tires now. Can we just stop that? I don't think I want to, I've never seen it, well, not never, but not in a long time have I seen comments complaining about Seat tyres. Seat are just as good as anything else. I had Pirelli's on my bike and they were crap, so let's just say that Seat tyres make great sticky rubber. I think they do. Oh, what's this? Little button does something. Little joy, joy button thingy majiggy. Oh, hello. I've got some settings here. It's hidden next to the horn, but under the indicator fuel range, fuel consumption, and that's kilometers per litre, so we need to change that. Battery voltage, which is full, because don't forget we're riding the bike, so we're charging. 
service engine term that's weird it doesn't cycle through if you keep pressing down you get stuck at the bottom all the way up trip one trip two so let's see if I can reset oh settings locked while riding they just came up this is weird I think I'm better off with the old-fashioned one thing there thing there the, the manual analog clock counter that little tripper don't have all this gubbins just confusing and I basically can't work it anyway oh look at that 137 for unleaded I haven't seen that in a long time oh we're indicating just pop in here guy in his Honda VFR now watch this Oh, I got neutral that time. I was trying to show you that neutral is hard to find, but obviously it's not that hard because I got it straight away. A side stand goes down. A little bit of a lean, but not horrific. Off. Get these gloves off. Now, I, you'll notice that I'm wearing proper gloves. And I get it, they don't suit the bike. Well, maybe they do actually. Kind of carbon fibre, modern, trendy. I started wearing proper protective gloves. Uh, so you might have noticed that I'm not wearing those tiny little things anymore um, So we were going to wear these in a little bit get them a bit more comfortable and start using them. They're a little bit warmer as well It's kind of annoying It just wants to close all the time Right, imagine you were coming back over here and this was your motorcycle as, I, as I'm in those footsteps now. Quite cool, isn't it? Quite cool. I've also bought <laughs> a Vimto to go with the bike. <laughs> I haven't had one of these in ages, but I just thought, look, that might even be the thumbnail. Boom, Vimto and Royal Enfield Gorilla 450. Right, here we are back after the test ride. I've literally got five minutes because there's a guy who's just come in on a Hunter 350, which I'll, maybe I'll be able to take a picture of when we go out just to show you. And he's thinking of taking this bike out on a test ride. So um, I obviously come lower priority than paying customers. So we'll quickly do a wrap up. Now, it's an amazing little bike. Absolutely loved it. It's, it, it's better than the Himalayan for me anyway in, numerous ways there's no vibration uh, in the third gear at 5500 rpm that's gone on this bike which is weird because it's the same engine it's lighter more chuckable more easy to stay on your feet with the kind of size of the bike um, i also like the fact that these kind of very modern colors just pop it's got absolute like, character to it comparing to the triumph 400 that is a very sort of buzzy high revving kind of engine this has got a little bit of that meteor 350 but, 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 but not too much obviously it's still high compression fairly revy liquid cooled engine but it has got some of that royal enfield character i would also pick it over the triumph speed 400 because it's got for me it's i prefer the brand i just love royal enfield more than i love triumph so unfortunately sorry speed 400 i would go for this bike over that now there are some downsides the thing with the fuel tank was a bit weird that it kept shutting on itself um that for some reason just seemed to be it's very finely balanced silly thing i know but that's that did that um the other thing is this doesn't really like can feel like it's on or off so that's going to make my obsession with tapping the indicators even worse non-adjustable levers it's a little bit plasticky there i guess um what else could i pick it it oh the other thing before i go i need to mention this the turning circle the lock the, the fully locked steering isn't as sharp as on the himalayan because it hasn't got the, the the cutouts in the tank now it looks better for not having the cutouts but it's it, it does restrict the turning circle so if i fill the bike up it goes to there like that so it's not not as good as the himalayan in that respect um would i buy one of these not right now 
but I could be tempted in the future. Uh, it's it's an amazing little street bike and it kind of suits the kind of bikes that I like and it's probably the kind of bike that you guys on the channel like as well. Um, yeah, it's it, it, it's I think it's a great upgrade from a Hunter 350 as this guy's going to find out in a minute. For me it's way better than the Himalayan 452 and it probably pips the Speed 400 as well because of the reasons I mentioned. We'll come up again, I'll get Susie on the back, but I've got to hand this bike back because there's literally a chap waiting around the corner for a test ride. So I will catch you in the next one, guys. Thanks a lot for listening. Um, appreciate all the comments and likes and that kind of thing. And I'll see you again. Right, we'll do a PS, a little bit of extra info. The chap is now gone. I've, I've given back the uh, Gorilla 450 and I just wanted to mention the, the, the throttle response. The, the key characteristics of the Gorilla 450 are quality. That they're, they're just, it kind of knocks out of the park in, in braking, devastatingly powerful brake for such a lightweight bike. Handling, grippy tires, 17 inch, nimble, can chuck into bends, lightweight. And the, the final thing is throttle response and pickup. It feels like uh, like we used to do back in the day, lighten the flywheel of a car. It's just so revvy and you open the throttle a tiny bit and the bike shoots forward. Now, you could also put that perhaps in the, in the downsides category as well. The throttle is so responsive. Um, we also check the standard things that I always do, like the jerkiness on off the throttle, no problems there. And also the vibration, which as I mentioned, doesn't have it, um, especially compared to the, the, the Himalayan 450. Yes. It's a bloody brilliant bike. It might be my favorite Royal Enfield. <sighs> it's not classically styled, which is a bit of a pain, but even that said, I've just, maybe I'm just head over heels with the, the what I'm gonna call it now is the Vimto paint scheme. 